In today's video, we're going to be talking about Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is a blood cell tumour which originates from the lymphocytes, which is a type of white blood cell. So the causes of Hodgkin's lymphoma are various, but it can be due to the Epstein-Barr virus, and there are other risk factors as well. So there could be genetic reasons, so if someone in your family has had Hodgkin's lymphoma, you're more likely to get it, and other risk factors include HIV and AIDS. So there are two groups of Hodgkin's lymphoma. We have the classical type and the nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma. Within the classical group of Hodgkin's lymphoma, there are four types. We have nodular sclerosing Hodgkin's lymphoma, mixed cellularity type, lymphocyte depleted and lymphocyte rich. So nodular sclerosing Hodgkin's lymphoma is the most common type it involves the lymph nodes, which contain Reed-Stenberg cells, which are a typical diagnostic tool for Hodgkin's lymphoma. In fact, you can see a diagram of what a Reed-Stenberg cell looks like here. Yeah, so the lymph nodes contain these Reed-Stenberg cells mixed with normal white blood cells as well. The lymph nodes contain scar tissue, which is why it has the name sclerosing. Um, it's more common in women than men, and it affects adults and adolescents under the age of 50. The mixed cellularity type occurs in 20 to 30 percent of cases and it's more common in older men. Here we have these Reed Stenberg cells, but they're mixed with inflammatory cells as well, like eosinophils, basophils, cytokines. And the main cause of the mixed cellularity type is the Epstein Barr virus. The lymphocyte depleted type is very rare and very aggressive. It consists of large pleomorphic Reed Stenberg cells, and we have the lymphocyte rich, which is um, which has a very diffuse effect throughout the body. Uh, but there are still a lot of normal white blood cells and a few typical Reed Stenberg cells. And the lymphocyte rich type has the greatest prognosis because there's a very low likelihood of a relapse. The nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma is another type. Here there aren't any Reed Stenberg cells present, but we have other abnormal B cells which are called popcorn cells, and also other small B cells which are found dotted around tissues in a nodular pattern. So in this type of Hodgkin's lymphoma, most of the lymphocytes in the lymph nodes are normal, but there is presence of popcorn cells which are abnormal, and this is a slow progressing form of lymphoma. The signs and symptoms of Hodgkin's lymphoma are tiredness, uh, enlargement of the lymph nodes, which is painless, night sweats, weight loss, itchy skin, enlargement of the spleen, enlargement of the liver, back pain, red patches on the skin, petechiae, which is like small hemorrhages in the skin because of a low platelet count, and fever in some cases. The diagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma can be done using a lymph node biopsy, other methods can be using a PET scan, a blood test, and a gallium scan used to be used, but now it's not used so much anymore. All Hodgkin's lymphomas and non-Hodgkin lymphomas are staged to determine which areas of the body are affected. So stage 1 involves a single lymph node region. Stage 2 involves two or more lymph node regions on the same side of the diaphragm. Stage 3 involves lymph node regions on both sides of the diaphragm. And stage 4 involves multiple affected lymph nodes throughout the body. For the treatment of Hodgkin's lymphoma, there are a few different methods. So we have chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Drugs, certain drugs are also given depending on the stage of the lymphoma. So we have this ABVD protocol, which is usually done at the start. So this consists of giving adriamycin, bleomycin, vinblastine, and decarbazine. We have the Stanford 5 regimen, which is usually given in stage 1 or stage 2. This consists of doxorubicin, vinblastine, mechlorethamine, etoposide, vincristine, bleomycin, and prednisone. And we have the Beacop protocol, which is usually given in a more advanced stage. So this consists of bleomycin, etoposide, doxorubicin, cyclophosphamide, vincristine, procarbazine, and prednisone. Stem cell therapy is also another option as well.